today. But so far it's been a great day. And I hope it's been a great day for you. I'm so sorry. I overslept today, so I had to um, jump up and still get myself together and still do what I had to do and run to the gym and sat outside the gym and like, well, maybe I shouldn't go in today since it's already late and I'm going to be rushing. But I told the devil he was alive and I came on through. Amen. So here we are today. Um, don't forget, don't forget, if you've just joined the page for the first time, don't forget to follow us right here on at I am Dr. Juanita Bynum. Um, like the page if you like, but I'd like for you to follow us on this page. And um, it's not a page of foolery. It's a page where people are tired of being stuck where they are and they're ready to go to the level and the promise that God has uh, prepared already for them. And so yesterday we were dealing with um, we were dealing with the offer versus the promise. And um, as promised, I said I was going to be here because this lesson really, really, really is um, very timely. And not just timely, but um, the message is very, very important because this is where I believe we get stuck a lot of times. And uh, please excuse the balloons. We're taping for television every night, and so it's the first week of television. I'll be on an hour uh, on Impact Network Monday through Fridays at 3 a.m. for one hour and 3 p.m. for 30 minutes. So we're taping um, the one-hour shows and so they had the balloons up to celebrate and so they're all in the back there so somebody may say, well, we celebrating. Well, we going up live on television at 3 with me is going on national TV. And uh, it's going to be the same program, same setting, just uh, in different airwaves. The scripture from yesterday um, in the book of Deuteronomy, and I want you to go back there with me in the book of Deuteron Deuteronomy. Um, and yesterday in the Message Bible, I believe it was, we came across, um, the devil is alive, okay. My computer's acting up, I don't know why. We came across Deuteronomy 2 and 24 and 25. And in the Message Bible, it said, on your feet, on your feet. Um, it is time for you to get up on your feet. In the Amplified Bible, um, it said that I want you to now arise, now arise. And we talked about you arising in your head, in your head, in your mind. I ministered on Sunday at um, Pastor Soroya's uh, Breakers Conference and when I began to minister the word that God had given me, I began to realize how powerful it is. How powerful it is to put my mind someplace first. To put my mind in a place first. When you look at Revelation, when God called Daniel, I'm mean, sorry, when God called John to come up into another dimension, he didn't go there physically. He did not go there physically. He went there spiritually. He took his spirit up and he said that I went into the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and he said I was there in special communication with God. I was there in special communication with God which means that is a clear indication to me that God take your spirit there before he takes you there. 
Are you hearing that? He takes your spirit there before he takes you there. You are the last part of the equation to get there. He takes your spirit there. Well, Dr. Bynum, why? I believe, this is my own belief, I believe that he takes your spirit there so that when you get there, you will be familiar with where you are. You will be familiar with where you are. It will not be a shock to you. You won't be wandering around like somebody lost. You know, like, oh my God. No, 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 no. You will be in your own spiritual deja vu. I mean, I've been here before. I, 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 I've seen this before. This is familiar to me. And this is why people that, that allow the Lord to take them in the spirit where he desires them to go, you, you can't deceive those people. You can't deceive them because, because they already know what the promise looks like. And, and they know the spirit of peace that comes with that promise. Because that's how you can also determine whether or not uh, it's an offer versus a promise. Because if it's an offer, you automatically start feeling that unrest. I know I do. I don't care how good it sounds. It's like I stopped something in my spirit just said, mm -mm, don't touch that. Mm -mm, not that. Mm -mm, not them. Don't do business with them. And the offer sounds unbelievable. But because I serve a God and you serve a God that is so determined this time to get you there that he has to interfere. Watch this. Because you are, we are, we are. Because we are people who have been trained 1,000% to be perfected in our feelings. Did you hear what I just said? We are people that have been trained 1,000% to be perfected in our feelings because we are those people that are perfected in our feelings. Then the Lord has to intercept what you feel in order to get your attention because of what you're about to miss. And so you can't go around ignoring that little thing in you. I'm talking to somebody because I, you know, when I'm ministering on at three with me and the Lord start talking, I feel, it's, it's almost like the spirit quickens. It quickens me when I know that somebody out there, this was directly for them. You can't keep ignoring that thing because that is your confirmation. The Bible said that which is from God is first, the very first thing you're going to feel. If, in fact, we are permitted to feel anything, the first thing that you're going to feel is the peace of God. It said that which is from God is first peaceable. And then it is pure. And it's easy to be entreated, which means it's easy for me to embrace it. And it's easy for me to embrace it because I have a peace about what God is doing. Are you, are you following this? Are you following this? And so when I, God is saying to us, when I take your spirit, and that's why in this particular lesson, he is demanding and he is commanding you to arise in the spirit of your mind. Because when I take your spirit up there, it's like the mind, the body is just a body bag. Let's just be honest about the body. The body is just a body bag. The body is subject to the obedience of the mind. Are you hearing this? The body is subject to the obedience of the mind of the spirit. So when my mind is in a place, my body obeys that place. That's why, you know, I, 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 I kind of beg the difference when people say, you know, I, I want the promise. And I, I want God to take me, you know, where it is he want me to go with. And da, da, da. you can't mean that. You, you can't mean that. You can't mean that. Because when the spirit of your mind is already where God desires you to go. When the spirit of your mind is already where God desires you to go. Then everything about you will begin to obey that. Are you, are, you, are you hearing this? Everything about you will begin to obey that. 
you will begin to walk like that. You will begin to talk like that. You will begin to live like that. And that's why I want to, God, help us today, Jesus. Help us today, God. This was on my mind <laughs> while I was on the treadmill when I first woke up this morning. It, 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 it's like when the scripture said, when Paul said, when I would to do good, evil is always present with me. When he says, there's a, there's a war going on in my members. And the war is because what God has said and where he has set my mind, I'm in warfare because I'm having a problem leaving the soul tie of who I used to be. I'm saying something right here. I have a soul tie to who I used to be. You have a soul tie to where you used to be, how you used to operate. And so the area of familiarity now becomes your enemy. Because you don't want to go to a place that you've never been before. Because where you are is familiar to you. Because you can control that. That's what you're locked into. That's where you are. And you're afraid to leave that place. Because my, my identity is with that. And I really don't believe what God is saying to me. Because... If I really believed what God was saying to me, then I would understand that what God has for me is greater than where I've been. Who am I talking to right there? Who am I talking to? What God is about to do for me is greater than where I've been. And so our belief in God, has it hasn't come to that place of complete trust. Because if I did, I wouldn't be shaken about what I have to walk away from because I know I'm going to something that is greater. Are you all hearing this? Are you hearing this? I, I really need you to get this because you cannot, you cannot celebrate yourself in two worlds. You cannot be content in two worlds. Either you're going to leave one and go to the other. Or are you going to stay where you are and reject where you're going? And so when there is no clear definition about who you are, then the promise don't know how to find you. And I just said something right there. I just said something. About, well, well, you know what, Dr. Bob? I'm anointed and I just, I just really feel that the power of God is, is, is really moving in my life and the Spirit of God. That's not all to it. That's not all to it. That is only one part of it. That is only one part of it. And so we disregard, we disregard the recipe, the recipe to the promise. We just shouting on the promise. But we're disregarding the recipe that the promise has a recipe. The promise has ingredients that cannot be left out if you are going to the promise. And so everybody want to shout over what's being said. But then we want to cry that this is difficult when it's time to operate and pursue what is being said. Two different things. Somebody say two different things. Somebody said two different things. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm, I'm going to say it again. It's not an easy process to go to the promise. And that's why if you're not called to it, you will never make it. If it's just a good idea, you will never succeed. But when you're called to it, you're equipped for it. Did you hear what I just said? When you are called to it, you are equipped for it. So then, let's look at the children of Israel. Let's take a closer look at them. Here they are. Watch this. Here they are. They are on their way. I said it yesterday. 2,000, uh, 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 39 years, 40 years in the desert, 40 years in the wilderness. Rather, they, 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 they coming up the 40th year. The Lord is saying to them, you go into the promise, and they have to walk through three other pieces of property. 
They have to bypass three other pieces of property uh, in order to get to the promise. Well, let me ask you this question. Do you think that everybody that saw them going through that process, everybody that saw them walking through that land, do you think everybody was going, yay, oh, the children of Israel, praise God, you all have come this far? No. No. They had to walk through that land being persecuted by people saying they're crazy. They God done left them. They still wandering after all this time. We heard about them leaving Egypt 40 years ago. And a journey that took three days. They just now coming into miles away from Canaan. Hope they make it. If they wandered around the, the wilderness for, 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 for 40 years and it was a three-day journey, good luck with that one. No, they had to walk through a lot. And sometimes we want to go to the promise, but we want an easy journey. And we, and, and, we, and we act as if we shouldn't be persecuted. We shouldn't be talked about. I shouldn't have to go through that. And why is this so hard? And, and why I got to go through this? But we're no exception. And as Christians, we want to pass. Do you know how difficult it was for people that are wealthy and that are successful? The things they had to go through, the things that they had to personally encounter, and none of those people claim to have the power of the Holy Ghost. None of those people claim to be saved. None of those people claim to know Jesus Christ. But they make it. They make it because the vision that they have is not just a good idea. That thing has penetrated their spirit. It's a spiritual thing. And if I don't become intertwined and interlocked, making the spirit of the thing one with me, then I can always make a decision when I can separate myself from it. My God, from, I can always decide. Today I want it. Tomorrow is hard. I don't want it today. I'm going to go two more weeks and I'm just going to try something else. But when that thing is a part of your spirit, it is, it, is, it is the fibers of who you are. It is not adjacent from you. It is conjoined with you. It's the thing that's empowering you. It's in me. I can't separate from it. I don't care how bad it is. I can't run off. I don't care how difficult it is. I cannot make the decision that I don't want to do it today. All I can do is take a nap. I told you all that when I first started coming on that three with me. Sometimes when it get difficult, you just got to go to bed. Got to get your head out of it. You just got to go, just go lay down, go to sleep, wake up. Because you're having a moment. And it's just a moment. And if you're not careful, you will end up making a wrong decision in the midst of a moment. You will make a lifetime decision that is the wrong decision because you had a bad moment. Now, somebody need to tap that screen right there because I know that was the truth right there. Well, I, I, you look back, think back over it. You on this page, think back over it. What did I do that that day I was really mad about something? That day I wasn't feeling like myself. And I made a decision to do something that I later on regretted because I wasn't in the right frame of mind. And so the first thing that God gave them in this passage of Deuteronomy, when God spoke to them about the final leg of the journey, this is the final leg of the journey. I'm talking to somebody today. This is the final leg of your journey. And this is the part you got to get this right. I heard the Lord say when I got off of that three with me yesterday, he said, tell them when you get back on tomorrow, if you miss this, you will not get another opportunity like this. The Lord would have to go and sit you over in a detour, a detoured place. But the promise is a bullseye. The promise is target. Are you hearing that? And you can't keep dancing around and hitting and missing and taking it for, 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 for granted that it's going to always be there. You can't miss this because that's what the children of Israel thought. Well, we going to the promised land. We're going to act a fool while we out here. La, 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 la. Or we're going to get there in three days, 40 years. And God had to kill off a whole generation. Are, are you hearing this? Not necessarily for you. I want you to hear this. 
I want you to hear this. You can't keep taking for granted the fact that you have an anointing on your life or the fact that God has called you to do something. You can't just become so familiar with that that you think it'll always be there while you go and act a fool. It'll always be there while I dance in and out of sin. It'll always be there because people are constantly telling me, you really anointed, you really got, God, you really gifted. There's something special about you. And we wear that like a coat. But that's not in you. That's not in you. That thing haven't gotten in you yet. Because if it was in you, you wouldn't keep playing with it. Whew, my God. Is somebody saying something? Because when they got ready to go, God said to them in this final leg, in this final leg, don't fight with nobody. Don't fight with them. Don't pick with them. Don't respond to nothing that they do. Because a devil don't want you to get there. You close. But you can't stop. And, and, and participate in unnecessary battles. You got to pick your battle. You got to know what really is your battle. Because a lot of stuff you fighting is not the real battle. Because why? God wants you to win the war, not the battle. So what the devil will do, he will wear you out in the battle. And when it's time for you to win the war, you're out of strength. You're out of breath. You're out of vitality. You're mentally crushed. You can't even do anything. You're too tired. You're too frustrated. Are you hearing God? Because you're fighting battles instead of waiting to win the war. And that's why God said to them, you're going to go through this three times. But don't fight with them. Don't battle with them. Because nothing they have is yours. Nothing they got is yours. Ignore that. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Every little thing happens. I, 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 I'm going I'm to I'm get them straight. No, you're going to shut up. You're going to go somewhere and be quiet. Because that battle, you need not fight in. Well, I'm going to tell them off. Well, you, you know what? I'm going to get them a piece of my mind. I, I, I'm going to go live on Facebook and get them. No, you're not. You're not going to do that. You're going to let them be the clown that they are. And you're going to stay focused because the enemy wants to entangle your mind. He wants to entangle your conversation. He wants to entangle your focus. He wants you to be delayed in the promise. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to anybody? Let me see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Are you getting this? I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Oh, Jesus. I was just looking at this and God brought it back to me. He brought it back to me. I want to find something for you here. I want to find something for you here. In the book of Samuel. In the book of Samuel. Yes, yes, yes. The book of Samuel, 2 Samuel, the 16th chapter. I want you to go there. I want you to go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, the 16th chapter. I want you to see something. I want to I wanna give you a confirmation of what I'm talking about here. Here David is, here David is, and he's on his way to battle, but I want you to hear this. In the 11th verse it said, and David said to Abishai and to all his servants, behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. This is when Absalom was coming against him. He said, he seeketh my life. And he said, how much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse for the Lord hath bidden him. He said, it may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will requit me good for his cursing this day. So here we have 
Let me move up here. Here we have, God gave me this a long time ago. In, I got to go back. 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 Yes, Lord. I got to go back. Yes. Okay. Go further back. Go further back. It's been a while since God gave this to me, but I want you, I, I have to read this to you. Okay. 16 verse. I'm going to start the top verse. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mohishabeth, met him with a couple of asses saddled. And upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. Provision. When he got to the top of the hill, provision was made for him. What? Where? When am I going to come through? When he got to the top of the hill, provision was made for him. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on. And the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat. And the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abided at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. So here it is. David is at the top of the hill. He's being provided for. The people that are with him are being provided for. And while he is in position, his own son is threatening to have the kingdom turned over to him. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Well, you don't know what I'm going through. My brother, my sister, it's going to always be a battle between brothers and sisters. So you got to get over that one. One day you're going to hate each other. And one day you're going to fall out and you're going to fall back in. You ain't going to speak to each other for weeks and months. And then you're going to turn around and say, hey, how you doing at the next barbecue? And then it's going to be as if it never happened. It's going to be you and this one. And after a while, the next time it's going to be that one in, against you. And the next time it's going to be you against them. And then it's going to be two of y'all against one of y'all. Then it's going to be three of y'all against one of y'all. It's called family issues. I want you to get that. Anything, anything the devil can use to distract you, he will. Anything. I don't care what it is. He desperate. He desperate because you're close. He desperate because you are close. I'm talking to somebody. He desperate because you are close. Sometimes you just got to let him have it. Well, my mother, dad, and left this to me. Sometimes you got to let it go. Well, it was my father's car. And we, he said he wanted me to have. Sometimes you got to just let it go. God. The Holy Ghost is preaching right now. Well, it's his baby. He should have took care. And, and he ain't gave Ray Ray nothing. And, 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 and since he was born in Ray Ray 5, let it go. Because you have been provided for. And you have been a mother and a father. And Ray Ray is healthy and he's happy. And he's with you. And he's maturing and growing and doing well in school. Leave it alone. Because that's not your battle. It's a distraction. But I will make him pay. So you're going to spend all of your energy because you're at the gate of the promise. And you're going to spend all of your energy going against Ray Ray Daddy. And when you get through with all of that, watch this. When you get through with all of that, the majority of the times when the enemy is in it, he will set the judge's favor against you anyway. And then you end up feeling like, why did I waste all my time with all of this? My God. My God, my God, my God, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I know what I'm talking about. Well, ain't you going to sue them? Nope. I'm going to let it go. Oh, they did this to you, Dr. Bonham. You're not going to take them to court because you got every right. Nope. I'm going to let them have it. I'm going to let them have it. I'm going to let everybody have whatever they want. Take it, keep it, steal it, whatever you want to do. You go right ahead. Because I recognize that, number one, nobody gets away. Nobody gets away. Oh, Jesus. Nobody gets away. I don't care what they do. I don't care if it take God 20 years. Nobody gets away with whatever they do against you. Nobody gets away. Whatsoever a man soweth, that right there, that same thing shall he also reap. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now?
Because we can say, well, the Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. If I wasn't anointed and if I wasn't a prophet, anybody that does you any harm, any wrong, they will not get away. God going to serve them up. My God. They meal is coming. But I cannot be distracted with that anymore. I can't, you cannot afford to be a, distracted with losses. Take the loss and keep it moving. Because if the vision is really in you and the Lord has called you, you got it in you to do it again. You got it in you to make it big and better. Learn from the mistake and keep it pushing. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now? Because the enemy wants to wear you out. He wants to wear you out. He wants to wear you out mentally. He wants to wear you out physically. Watch this. Watch this. And the king said, and where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then the king of Ziba, behold, thine are all that pertain unto Mehesheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when King David came to Behirim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shemai, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. Here somebody is cursing David out in the streets. Okay. As he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of the King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left hand. And thus says Shemai when he cursed, come out, come out, the bloody man and thou man of Belial. The Lord has returned unto thee all the blood of the house of Saul. Now watch this, watch this. David could have jumped off of his horse right then. He could have told his men, kill him. But that was an unnecessary war. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a war, it was a battle that David refused to engage in. That's too small. That's too insignificant. You want me as a king to come up on my horse and fight you. And I got all these mighty men here. Not worth it. Not worth it. Will not engage myself in that. Oh God, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? And he said here, it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. For his cursing this day. Don't you know that God is obligated to help you when people are coming against you? Especially when you stay in the mind that he has put you in. Are you hearing this? God didn't call David to beat up a man. He called him to be a mighty warrior. He didn't call his army to jump up of a horse and slay a man. He called them to be a mighty army. Are you all hearing this? So all of this become distractions from the original plan, from what God really has planned for you. And so the Lord says to him, this is going to be a temptation for you. When you are going through this land, this is going to be a temptation for you. So be very careful. Don't fight these people. Don't provoke these people. Don't become entwined with craziness. Keep your focus on where I told you to go. Are you hearing that? Because if you don't, you're going to be entangled again. And then you're talking about battles. And then you're talking about wars. And back in the Bible days, you didn't fight a war unless you took the land. And if God said the land is not mine. Because first of all, let me help you with something. He would never, ever, ever send his servants into battle to war after anything. Without giving them the victory before they even start the fight. I just said something right there. And that's why everybody in the Bible that ignored God, when God sent the prophet to say, don't go fight, they lost the battle. Because if God says go, he's going to cause you to win the battle. You're going with winning in you. 
You already going with the victory in your hand. You don't have to fight anybody for the victory. You're fighting them for possession, not the victory. I just said something right there. God, I can get up and, and run around this house right now. Who oh my God. Yes, Lord, I received that. You're not fighting them for the victory. You're fighting them for possession. Because I came in here with the victory. Anybody hear that? Did anybody hear that? Diane, I see you. I see you. No, you already got the victory. Now what I'm doing is using the strategy of the Lord to take possession. And that's when God said, take it out of his hands. Take it out of his hands. Because I've called you to, to be the possessor, not just victorious. Lord Jesus, is the Lord talking to us today? No, we're too busy shouting over victorious. But we better learn how to become the possessor. You already got the victory. How long are we going to shout for the victory? How long are we going to shout because we got a word from the Lord that we got the victory? When are we going to take possession? That's the next step. What, what, what Dr. Bottom, I, you know, I, you just don't understand because you don't understand where I am. Where I am right now. And, 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 and I, know, I know that sounds easy to you, Dr. Bottom. That, 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 that sounds like, you know... Just take possession, you know. Can't nobody just just take possession like that. I mean, you know, it, it's this has been a journey that I just can't even talk about. Okay, but let's talk about that. Let's talk about how much time I got. How much time I got? Okay, I got five minutes. I got five minutes. Five minutes. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. So then, so then, let's go to Daniel. You don't know where I am. You don't know what I'm going through. It's easy for you to sit over there and 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 and, and, and say what you're saying. You sitting over there in your house and this all pretty, da 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 da. No, I lost this house at one point. It, it, it didn't look like this. When I went through my transition, it was eight holes in the wall. Two of them was in this, in this room right here, in the ceiling. There was times that I came in this house and I slept in this house. And I was right over there on the couch with dirty and clean clothes stacked on top of me because I didn't even have lights. I didn't even have heat. And the most I could afford is to buy me some fire logs to sleep right over there and light the fireplace. There was dirt all over the floor where pipes had burst in my house and I had eight walls, eight holes in the walls throughout this house. And nobody came to help me. And the people were saying that you've already lost this house. And when I came back and decided that I know God gave me this house, I know God did, that I served the Lord and I paid my tithes and my offering. The people said, well, you might as well get all the rest of your little stuff out of here. No, I came in here and I took possession because God told me that I had the victory. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right now. The Lord told me I had the victory. And that kind of irritates me when people think that I'm just sitting here jawjacking, as my daddy say, and I haven't walked through what I have preached. No, ma'am, it was not easy. But when God said I get the victory, I took possession. And I remember, I remember when, when, when they told me that, that my house was gone. And while I was in here, I was invited to preach for Bishop Wilson. And I went to her church to preach. And when I got there, the Lord said to me, I want you to stay. I want you to stay in this, in this church, and I want you to preach. They had padlocked the doors, and I couldn't even come in this house. And they had the little padlock on the door that had the combination to it. And I went to her church and preached. I preached for three days. God said, sleep in the church. When I got through sleeping in the church, he said, give her all the offering, and I did. But the third night... At around 5 o'clock, I said to my assistant, the Lord told me to tell you to go to my house. Because I was talking about possessing what God says is yours. I said, God told me to tell you to go to my house. She said, I said, then call me when you get there. Her name is Melinda. To this day, I will never forget this. She was in front of my house. She called me. She said, prophetess. She said, I'm standing in front of your house. And I said, what do you see? She said, the padlocks is on the door. I said, you do see any mail or anything? She said, it's mail hanging out the mailbox, but it looked like it's nothing but junk. And then she said, wait a minute. 
I said, what? She said, it's a silver key laying over here on the sidewalk. And I said, pick it up and stick it in my door. She said, well, Dr. Bottom, this is a combination lock and it ain't going to fit. I said, pick it up and put it in the door. She picked it up, put it in the padlock. It unlocked itself. I said, bring it back to me. And so then I picked up the phone and I called the company and I said, um, something just happened. I said, there was a key that was laying outside on the ground. And I know that my house has been foreclosed. And the lady said, well, no, according to our records, it's been reversed. And she said, but you can't have a key because the people have to come and unlock it and you have to sign off. I said, no, ma'am, I have a key. And the key unlocked it. She said, well, ma'am, just going on in your house. I'm telling you, we can keep on talking about the victory or we want to. But God is looking for people that's going to possess what I've said I've given you. Who am I talking to right now? And that wasn't the first time. And then when I got it back that time, I still wasn't making enough money to pay for it. And it went back into foreclosure. No, I'm telling you, I know what I'm preaching about today. And the Lord sent me to West Palm Beach, Florida to preach. And I was preaching there for several days. And again, the Lord said, don't take the offering. It's time for you to sow. Because some of y'all sitting there saving for where you're trying to go when you need to sow for where you're trying to go. And this ain't no pitch for you to sow to me. Because I don't sit on here and ask you for money. I don't have to. God shall supply all of my needs. Who am I talking to right now? And I preached. And God said again, don't take the honorarium. And I preached there for three or four days and didn't take it. Two ladies sitting in the audience called my office two weeks later and said, I'm a manager at Chase Bank. I'm supposed to sign off to foreclose on Dr. Bynum's house. Tell her I'm giving her back her house. Let me tell you something. I sit here and I preach what I preach because I want to see you go to destiny. I don't want to see you miss the promise, fooling around, jawjacking with craziness and your life all entangled and stuff when God is about to give you a miracle. I'm here to tell you that your miracle is at hand. The victory is already in your spirit. The victory is already in your mind. God is already on your side. You just got to take the victory. You got to take it and get possession of what he said is yours. Who am I preaching to today? Oh my God, from Zion, Jesus, I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. And he repeatedly, I want you to hear this. He don't do it one time. When God says that something is yours, when God says this is the promise that I have for you, oh my God. When he says this is the promise that I have for you, All things have to be returned back to you. But you have to be in a position to take possession. You have to be in the position to take possession. You have to take it. Ooh. My God. Ooh. How much time do I have here? I gotta go. I gotta go. I'll be on live tomorrow. Tag somebody in this. Share this. I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. I told you when I can come on like this, I will. And when I can't, I just can't. But I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. The offer versus the promise and the victory versus possession. The whole kingdom of God got the victory. But less than 2% of us got the promise. Thank you.
the whole kingdom of God got the victory. But only about 2% of us has the possession. 